Africa is on the verge of one of its boldest infrastructure and energy pivots. Imagine a network, not of pipelines, but of rail tracks, stretching tens of thousands of kilometers across the continent, carrying clean energy to over a billion people. Today, we dive into the Gas by Rail Economic Corridor Initiative, a plan that could reshape not only how Africa powers its homes, but how it builds its industries, preserves its forests, and defines its future. Earlier this month, on December 8, 2025, the government of Ethiopia signed a host country collaborative agreement with private firm Insight Dynamic Resources, IDR, formally launching the Gas by Rail Economic Corridor Initiative, GBREci. Under the plan, a massive freight rail network spanning 73,500 kilometers will link up to 40 sub-Saharan African countries. This network is envisioned as a virtual pipeline. Instead of constructing hundreds or thousands of kilometers of gas pipelines, which often prove prohibitively expensive, complex, and politically fraught, the initiative relies on railways to distribute densified liquefied natural gas, or LNG, across vast distances. More than 1.2 billion people stand to benefit from access to clean, affordable natural gas carried by this rail network, the Habari network. Why rail and why gas instead of pipeline or sticking with traditional energy sources? For decades, much of Africa has relied on wood, charcoal, and biomass for cooking and heating, driving widespread deforestation, household air pollution, and greenhouse gas emissions. The designers of GBR-ECI argue that rail-delivered gas can help slash wood fuel consumption and associated emissions by up to 75%. Pipelines across vast, diverse terrains, crossing borders, mountains, swamps, remote areas, are expensive, slow to build, and vulnerable to political and logistical obstacles. A rail-based virtual pipeline is more flexible and potentially faster to deploy. Many African countries are landlocked or have large rural regions. Traditional pipeline infrastructure has often bypassed them. Rail can reach deep into remote, underserved areas. In short, this approach is pitched not just as an energy project, but as a continent-wide solution to chronic energy poverty, environmental degradation, and infrastructure fragmentation. But GBR-ECI isn't just about fueling stoves or lighting homes. At the heart of the plan lies an even broader ambition to transform Africa into an industrial powerhouse. Central to this vision is the Ethio Cluster, a mega industrial and energy hub to be built in Ethiopia. By 2030, the Ethio Cluster aims to produce green hydrogen, green iron, and up to 5 million tons of green steel annually. These outputs could feed domestic manufacturing, infrastructure building, including the rail network itself, and export industries, repositioning Africa not as a raw resource exporter, but as a base for clean manufacturing. Proponents estimate this could unlock a $29 trillion industrial transformation for the continent. Let's pause to appreciate the scale and acknowledge the challenges. The envisioned logistics fleet is massive. Project documents cite a need for 5,100 heavy-haul locomotives, nearly 80,000 specialized tank units, and around 100,000 wagons and coaches to handle gas transport across the network. Digital Backbone is planned, built by Siemens Mobility through its Siemens Accelerator platform, using AI and digital twin monitoring to manage infrastructure, coordinate freight flows, and optimize capacity in real time. Costs across different reports range. Some earlier MOUs pegged the project value at $400 billion, yet some recent coverage frames the potential broader economic impact at $29 trillion, industrial output, not implementation cost. At the same time, there are significant obstacles. Many African nations currently lack the institutional capacity, stable governance, and cross-border coordination required for a project of this scale. Existing rail infrastructure is often sparse or outdated. In Ethiopia, for instance, only around 902 kilometers of track is reportedly operational, even though the country has designed routes spanning 5,000 kilometers. 
transporting LNG by rail, while innovative, involves safety, logistics, and regulatory risks, leaks, handling LNG in tank cars, transit across different climates and terrains, and ensuring safe delivery to end users. Thus, the plan is audacious. Its failure or mismanagement could lead to stranded assets, financial losses, or environmental and safety hazards. So what stands to be gained or lost? On the upside, access to reliable, clean energy for 1.2 billion people. That could transform lives, electrify homes, power machinery, reduce indoor air pollution, improve health, and cut deforestation from wood fuel. A shift in Africa's economic identity, from resource exporter to industrial and manufacturing continent, producing green steel, hydrogen, building materials, and more. Regional integration, a shared infrastructure network could deepen trade ties, support cross-border supply chains, and catalyze economies of scale across countries. Employment, the project is projected to create tens of millions of jobs by 2050. On the downside, risk side, governance and coordination complexity. 40 countries, dozens of governments. Doing this right requires legal, regulatory, environmental, and safety alignment across borders. Execution risk, building 73,500 kilometers rail plus associated infrastructure is unprecedented in scope. Delays, overruns, and mismanagement are plausible. Environmental and social risk, while the shift away from wood fuel is positive, transporting LNG and hydrogen has risks. Communities along routes might be impacted. Transparency and environmental safeguards will be critical. Financing and sustainability. The early numbers are large, but converting long-term industrial potential into real investments will require enormous capital, sustained political will, and global cooperation. This isn't Africa's first flirtation with large-scale rail infrastructure, but previous attempts have had mixed success. For example, the Tazara Railway, built in the 1970s to link Zambia's copper belt to the sea, once stood as a symbol of pan-African cooperation. Yet over time, freight declined dramatically. At its low point in 2014-2015, Tazara was operating far under capacity. Similarly, the existing Addis Ababa Djibouti Railway, inaugurated in 2018, demonstrates both the potential and challenges of rail in Ethiopia. It gave landlocked Ethiopia access to a seaport and cut transport cost and time drastically compared with road transport. What the Gas by Rail Economic Corridor Initiative attempts, rail plus energy plus industrialization, on a pan-African scale, is far more ambitious. If done right, it could learn from past mistakes. If mishandled, it could become another large infrastructure project that under-delivers. The Gas by Rail Economic Corridor Initiative is more than a railway. It's more than steel tracks, locomotives, or industrial clusters. It's a vision, a bold gamble for Africa's energy independence, its industrial rebirth, and the deeper integration of a continent often divided by infrastructure gaps and historic barriers. It represents a belief that Africa can chart its own path, that it can power its cities, fuel its industries, and uplift its people with solutions designed for its realities, not imported templates. It signals a future where access to clean, reliable energy is not a privilege for a few, but a foundation for hundreds of millions. But grand visions don't fulfill themselves. They succeed only when ambition is matched with rigorous planning, transparent governance, environmental responsibility, and the steady, disciplined cooperation of nations working towards a common good. They require not just steel and technology, but trust, leadership, and long-term commitment. And now, as the world watches, Africa stands at a remarkable crossroads. Will this iron river of energy become the backbone of a cleaner, greener, more industrialized Africa? An engine that powers cities, fuels industries, and uplifts a new wave of prosperity across the continent? Or will it fade into the long list of projects that began with promise but never reached their full potential? The answer is not written yet, but for the first time in decades, Africa is not simply reacting to global energy transitions, it is shaping one of its own. 
if the vision is realized, if the partnerships hold, if the momentum continues, the gas-by-rail corridor could be remembered as the spark that helped usher in a new era of African innovation, African industry, and African opportunity, a future where the continent doesn't just keep up with the world, it helps lead it. And that possibility, perhaps more than anything else, is worth believing in.